Hi folks. So I'm meditating on today's topic. I was steered towards my little essential oil blend that I've got here that I have in my purse all the time. It's made out of um, clary sage, cedar wood and frankincense. It may have a dash of myrrh in it as well. I like the woodiness. There's a lot of stability to be gained from this. I know that cedar wood, atlas cedar wood, is the main essential oil in this. And I've rolled it on my little piece of wood here, my lovely bit of wood. And I've been sniffing it for a while and, and as I came through the meditation, I was guided to talk about the synchronistic sense of us in our everydayness and nature itself. Now obviously we are nature itself as well, so there's that sense of tapping in to organic fields literally a field if you like a field full of trees if you want um this called on me to look up cedar wood as i was you know guided to get this oil out so the first place i looked and I've looked, using a few, now you know I'm a um, learning practitioner of essential oil therapy. That's one of the courses that I'm doing at the moment. So it's drawn me greatly to essential oils. And then of course, um, trees, herbs, flowers, plants, you know, that sort of thing. So for wood element, and this is, information is extracted from the Chinese medicine guidebook, KG Styles. Uh, this is to balance the five elements and the organ meridians with essential oils, this particular book. Um, and this is talking about uh, fire, earth, metal, water and wood elements. It's a summary book. It's not the whole thing because the whole thing is very lengthy and I'd never actually get round to reading it all. So for wood element, then we're looking at the synchronicity, the beauty, the stability that trees offer. Um, and this is in honour of our great mother, which is fair dues. So the power of wood is to regulate and restore. It absolutely does that. It certainly brings me a sense of stability and calm. Tapping into the oil from a tree calms my nervous system, takes me into a lovely parasympathetic state that's kind of high on that polyvagal ladder so to speak if you're familiar with that um so the organ meridian channels i'm sort of gazing at the book here gall bladder yang and liver yin <laughs> i knew i was guided towards this earlier this lovely rock that a friend of mine bought me beautiful this is more about balance isn't it balancing those life force energies inside you the season of wood element is spring Taste is sour. Emotional um, element is anger. Body parts, liver, gallbladder, eyes, tendons. Colour green. Chakra, third, Manipura, solar plexus. I nearly pointed up there then. Odd. Sour action, cooling, promotes digestion, enzyme secretion, liver function. Signs of balance and imbalance. Let's have a look. A balanced wood element supports trust in the life process and taking full responsibility for one's life. Uh, you feel a strong, stable, motivated, disciplined and easily able, you are easily able to fuel yourself with inspiration. One of the um, synchronicities that came about when I was meditating was 13.13 on the clock. And it said time to let your artistic expression flow, which is how come I'm talking about trees. Um, you have a strong, uh, you have a strong sense of purpose and the necessary autonomy to set and accomplish your goals. 
You are the creator of your life experience and easily sustain all that you desire in the physical world. You feel robust, energy, physical power, stamina and aliveness. And this would be right. I am feeling this the last few days. Yes, I am. A balanced wood element supports a strong immune system. Good o, because everyone's just had that horrible flu, bug, virus, COVID, not COVID thing over Christmas period that's lasted about a month for everybody, haven't they? Mm. And actually, naturally, I even put a stick of natural licorice in my peppermint tea this morning. So we're all woody, aren't we? And I had a beautiful walk this morning in the woods. Mm. It's lovely when it's wet because you can really smell it, can't you? You may experience imbalance as a need to manipulate and control situations which may lead to repression of your needs and a healthy uh, self-expression. You may lack vision, self-control and being extremely self-critical of yourself and others. So that's the balance imbalance. I looked up cedar then. Because it's lovely. Very woody. There's also Chinese cedar. There's different types of cedar. I also have a Chinese cedar um, oil, which is very woody. Very, very woody. Quite um, broad in terms of wood. But I've used Atlas because it is just subtle. A very calming hug you get from cedar essential oil. So cedar, according to Nature's Hidden Oracles by Liz Dean, Healing, Protection and Abundance. Now this book, interestingly, Liz Dean, is from 2021. I also looked up my cedar in my very old, well not very old, but older book by Mary Summer Rain in 1999. She's an old Chippewa. She's a Native American Indian. She imparts her knowledge on the cedar, saying the symbology of cedar energised protection of one's spiritual beliefs. Influencing energy increases spiritual conviction. So we're getting some things from before to now meeting up. We know how information is disseminated and handed down and handed along, don't we? We know these things. But we can see it in action when we look across different resources, can't we? And I wondered then, why are we talking about this stability, this spiritual conviction, this spiritual protection? Why are we talking about these things here today? So I've just spent quite a long time discussing cedar. Did you just see that? Well, that's just right. I'm going to pick them up. Right. Really? Okay, that looked like a lot, but it was five. So, what's the message from this bundle then that just shot out there? So, here we go. And these are nature's oracles, too. Uh, these are my conscious cards that I took and made. Daily routines are your rituals. These things can cultivate a sense of stability in you with your daily routines. This is about the everyday mess. You know, daisies are abundant. They're very popular, aren't they? Under our feet, we can often just dismiss them entirely, like we can our daily routines. Things such as sitting for a minute and staring out the window, daydreaming, taking a long time to make a cuppa, um, preparing food, especially if there's a reasonable amount of food for a family you know there's more potatoes to peel and what have you so we have that sort of thing um our washing routines um reading working traveling to and from work that's quite a space for people isn't it because we are which isn't particularly um encouraging but we are or can be often quite subconscious can't we we're letting the body do the driving work because the motor memory is often there isn't it so it's doing that and we get to sort of zone out a little bit every now and then or get out of our own way because we are filtering out because we are 
busy with other things. We are watching and, and what have you. So we get, it's, it's quite a subconscious state sometimes driving. There are other times when it's not. It's kind of a daily routine. It's like a, a ritual, isn't it? We can get into that space of drifting away a little bit. Um, there's lots of studies done in psychology on that. That sort of attention, um, not deficit, but attention resource type thing and what sort of cognitive arousal state we're in but your daily routines these are the things that will help you create stability in your life the reason is because they're familiar and they're often quite as i say subconscious we do them they don't require much in the way of cognitive resource they're not demanding are they and they're not always physically demanding because we've done them so often we've got that muscle memory it allows us to get out of our own way you know when i've channeled before that's basically what it is i get out of my own way get myself into that um theta state brainwave frequency so i'm not really even caring about what's going on i'm just allowing things to move through me your daily rituals they're the things that help you create stability inside yourself so the next one connect your inner earth to ether and we've got a tree there now we talked about this on yesterday's podcast if that's what you want to call it yesterday's video there's nothing but stability there you, you cannot argue that, um, I mean, look, something is so permanent, it's casting a shadow, first of all. It's that solid. It is matter, it's material, it is uh, made of something, isn't it? It's got roots, it's not going to blow over easy, is it? Even if, the, you know, eight foot of water went gushing through that field right now, it's likely that that tree would still be there. The huts that we build, the sheds that we build wouldn't be. The horses would probably be all over the bloody place, bless them. The dogs and, I don't know, the little shop doorways and things, you know, that sort of stuff, they'd be washed away. Trees are the ones that often withstand um, a surge, a blast, a force, aren't they? And this is just really tying in. I mean, this is winter here. A time right now where we can often be um, quite still like the tree. I mean, we think the tree is still. We think it's sedimentary, but it's not. It's doing a lot of work to make sure that it is uh, utilising the resources that it has stored in its trunk. This is us. We're doing the same thing. In the winter when there's less doing, we're less social. So we're more inward. We're more likely to be in a sort of hermit state. Um, we're doing similar to the trees, aren't we? We're in that um, inward, inward state, that inward, doesn't look like much is going on outside. We're rather exposed to the cold. It's not something we really sort of like to tend to go inside, chill, but look. We have more time available to us, don't we? To go inwards and think about some of the things of the year. Think about goals that we might like to see occur in our new year, in the spring, in the summer, that sort of thing. Be like the tree. You really are enough. So stop thinking, stop letting that cloud ruin your image of the blue sky that you see. You really are enough. That's taking me towards something I was having a conversation about this morning on the way to walking the dog. And I took her a bit further, so I had longer to consider the conversation I was having with my higher self and source. And it was on the topic of, we think the sky is blue and we just accept it. Because this is what we're told and everyone is told this, so everyone sees this. Actually, it's confirmatory bias in some ways, isn't it? Because if we got a piece of sky, we'd probably find, if it was in a clear container, that it isn't blue at all, is it? 
there are spectrums of light moving through and there's something that makes it look blue to our visual perception. But actually a piece of sky, if you could have that, wouldn't be blue. It doesn't look blue at all. And it was about that sort of collective influence that we accept some things as they are. And when we are testing the world, when we're exploring the world more, rather than just going along in agreement with everything, all the acclaims made, um, when we are testing and exploring, we're doing that, we're dancing with life, aren't we? We're dancing with the game of life. It's a gorgeous space to allow yourself to be in. Because what you say is, I know some things and I know nothing. I know nothing at all. And I like knowing nothing because that means I go back to that childish state that says, let's just enjoy everything then. See what it brings. See how it is. Let's not accept that the sky is blue because a child would tell you the sky could be any colour. And when we look out, some evenings it the sky is just phenomenal isn't it i mean it always is even if it's cloudy but it's often phenomenal we look out and think oh look at that the shape of the clouds um and the color all year round now not just um summertime not just autumn not just spring winter time too the whole year round we look up we see those colors and we think oh wow and there's something lovely in that so the next card is wait for divine instruction. This came out yesterday too, that's funny. So you're dancing with life then. You're moving around through just exploring rather than thinking that you know. You might receive some divine instruction, particularly if you're feeling stable. The art of kind of the, it's not just the nervous system stable. It's emotionally stable. Now you might say, well, you can't have one without the other. No, that's right. But we couldn't say which causes which, would we? Or would we? It's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, isn't it? What comes first? Emotions or nervous system responses? We might say nervous system responses on an evolutionary, uh, from an evolutionary psychology lens because we know that life itself has transformed, changed and adapted. But we couldn't really say that something else doesn't have an emotion. We don't know. We don't know that. Because we might say, well, emotions are housed in the brain or in this place and this place. We don't know that either. Those things are disseminated. They're not, they're not, they're not, um, fundamental truths of the energy systems that we are because you don't necessarily always need structure to be something that is a sentient responsive relative energetic conscious force do you you don't need a body for that we know that we know that because our ancestors and our spirit guides they they don't come into our dreams as things with a concrete body and yet the emotion in a dream is huge. But there isn't, there, in essence, there is no body in a dream, if you get me. No body, physical body, no, none of this. It's all essential, isn't it? It's all in your imagination and yet the emotions appear. from the things in the dream and yourself. Mm. The energy of the universe does not work all right on work. That's easy for you to say. The energy of the universe does not work on right or wrong. It only seeks balance. So the more stable you are, the more you are contributing to the balance in the universe. Imagine that card coming out. Let's get one from the tarot. The tarot keep wanting to show up. And these are, considering these, I'm going to read these intuitively because they are coming out as archetypes. They're not coming out as the uh, main collective meaning. I don't do them like that always. I do take some of that information. I prefer not to have to remember to then say, oh, this card means. 
because it doesn't always mean like that for me. Sometimes these things change. I find that these cards, for me, are storytellers. Oh, what have we got? We've got the Queen of Wands. Now, one thing I do know about tarot is that wands are more of the spiritual side of the consciousness in the cards. And the cat there is about being some sort of spiritual guardian or spiritually aware and in tune with the spiritually aware person. We've got the Queen of Wands. So what we're saying is own your spiritual sovereignty. It is a gorgeous way to create stability when you feel like you've got spiritual sovereignty. And that is owning your own spirituality, telling it like it is, regardless of what someone else says, which is similar to what I've just said about the ways in which I read the tarot cards. I know they have a specific meaning and I'm not here to defy that at all. But I'm here to, I'm not discounting that. I'm here to say, but I don't use them that way. These cards are jumping out today. Oh, we've got the Page of Pentacles. The start of something manifesting. The start of something coming into reality. Well, if you keep your spiritual sovereignty, you can create something that you'd like. And maybe it is that stability. Maybe it is that cedarwood stability. One more from here, because these are interesting today. I feel nice and chill with this cedar oil. It's really nice. It's lovely. And actually, it's quite grounding to be sat here holding a piece of wood <laughs> and smelling the oil on it. Any more? Give us another archetype. What we've got here is a queen, a page. So we've got, if we go basic, <coughs> we've got a feminine, a masculine. She, in this story, is higher than him. However, he is of service to her. It's quite a divine union. And she is the spiritual queen of things. He is the page that is making things happen for her. It's quite a nice little partnership there. We've got spiritual and earth energy. We've also then got the page of cups, who the cups are often um, resonant of emotional energy. And he's just coming in there holding that cup with the fish in, which is a, um, a manifest form of life, life itself, primordial life of all types. So we've really got earth, air and emotions here when you look at it, earth, air and water. We've got these elements, haven't we? The only thing we're missing is fire. Now, as we're talking about balance today, I wonder if we would get anything to do with fire to come out next. Wouldn't that be interesting? Because that would be talking about stability, closing this reading, which I'm going to do any minute. Which kind of hasn't really gone anywhere, but that's quite nice. Neanderings of trees and trees don't demand that, though, do they? They don't want loads of attention. They don't want you to be talking really fast about, they don't, they, they, you know, the Ents in um, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, they take a long time to say very little. And that's the energy, that's the tree spirit here today. Ooh, <laughs> right, have we got any fire? We have the Three of Pentacles. This is talking about collaboration. So we could see the fire in the passion of this collaboration. This is mastery and collaboration. Collaborating with the things inside yourself, but collaborating with those outside to create something you are passionate about. So we got it. We made it happen. I 
know this didn't kind of do much, but it did enough, I feel. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to do another short video on um, a roomy reading. It's only a short one. It will be the Whirling Goddess. Have a lovely day. And may you maintain your stability. And get yourself some seed oil. It's divine.